Welcome to this short Wise Owl tutorial on error handling in integration services. Here's what we'll cover on the tutorial. I'll begin by showing the example we're trying to solve. So I'll show what the problem is and then show the proposed solution. What we'll then do is look at recreating the solution in more detail. So I'll show how to use error handling to redirect errors and then look at one particular feature of the configure error output dialog box which needs further explanation. So let's get started. Before we look at error handling, let's have a look at the problem I'm trying to solve. I've got a table here called TBL Great Britons, and if we select the rows in that table, you'll see that it contains 10 rows. There was a series in the UK about 10 years ago where people were asked to vote for their Greatest Britons, and this is a result of the poll. There's some quite surprising results. I think it's fair to say that few people would think Princess Diana deserved to be the third Greatest Britain of all time. I certainly didn't and I'm not sure people like John Lennon deserve to be there either. And I put the Wise Owl verdict on the right hand side. What I want to do is to create a package which will import the data from the SQL Server table, but then try truncating this verdict to 25 characters. Six of the records will be fine, but four of them won't. For example, you'll never get the word greatest mathematician ever within 25 characters. And what I'm going to do is create a package to handle those errors. So let's have a look at that. I've got here the final package. In a moment we'll create this, just to show you where we're trying to go. There's a data flow task to import the SQL Server table, and then I've got a data conversion tab which will attempt to truncate the characters. And what I'm going to do is send the good data down this path and the bad data down this path. And if I just run this package to show you the results, You'll see this is the first path. These are the people where I didn't have to truncate the data because the verdict wasn't 25 characters. And if I close down that data viewer, you'll now see the second one. You can see Isaac Newton's, Newton, greatest mathematician ever, was truncated. And you can see in the final output, six rows went down the OK data path and four rows went down the truncated data path. And what I'm going to do now is show you how we achieve this. So to create this package, the first thing I need to do is to add a data flow task. And if I double click on that, within that, I'm going to add a source. And what the source will do is get its information from the SQL Server table. I've got a connection already set up. I'll rename it. Happily, I've got something already in my clipboard. So it's going to import the allegedly Great Britons. I'll configure that and say which table it's getting its information from. And then what I'm going to do is feed the information from that into a data conversion task. And this is a bit which could go wrong. I'll configure the data conversion task to take the Wise Owl verdict. And what I'm going to do is rename it as truncated verdict. And I'm going to try to shorten it to 25 characters. Now, the point behind this tutorial is what happens now. What I'm going to do is click on this button, which is at the bottom left of many of the tasks in SSIS, and configure my error output. There's two types of things I might want to consider. One is what happens when there's an error, and one is what happens when there's truncation, which is considered as a separate error. It's probably classified internally as a warning. I want to look at truncation, and I've got three choices. At the moment, it's just going to fail. I could ignore the fail. That sounds a, a recipe for disaster. What I'm going to do instead is to redirect the road on a different pipe. I'll look at this bit at the bottom at the end of this tutorial. If I then choose OK and OK again, I've got a warning there because at the moment it's saying that rows sent to the error output will be lost, so I need to put something else in my data flow. So what I'm now going to do is to add into this, I'll just move that down a bit, uh, two union all transforms to mop up the data. And then I'll direct the good data, the blue arrow, into the left-hand one, and the bad data, the error data, into the right-hand one. When I do that, for some reason, it always comes up with this dialog box, giving me a chance to change my choices, but I want to keep what I've got, so I'll choose OK. What I'll then do is put a, a data viewer on this right-hand path, so that when I run the package, I'll be able to see what's going down it. And you can see there the four rows where the data was truncated. So that's how you can configure error handling within SSIS. 
The last thing I want to do is explain about a feature in the Configure Error Output dialog box which I mentioned earlier. If I double click on the Data Conversion task, I can then go into the Configure Error Output dialog box. And this is the feature I was going to explain, not because it's useful, just because it's so strange. The reason it's there is because I could select several different items in this list at the top. It would make more sense if I had more columns in my list. And then I could choose, for example, ignore failure. And when I click on the apply button, what will happen is it will change all of these selected items to the thing I've chosen down here. And that's all that that feature does. Presumably somebody at Microsoft decided that this was a useful feature to add, but I think it's just plain confusing. And that completes this tut short tutorial on error handling in SSIS. I hope you've enjoyed this short tutorial on error handling in SSIS. You can find loads more training resources and all things SQL Server, .NET or Microsoft Office at www.wiseowl.co.uk.